Well, hello there, C++ fans. Today is a, a very, very important lecture. Uh, what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to look at the for loops. What we have in front of us is our basic program uh, that we always start our all of our programs with. And what I'm going to demonstrate today is uh, probably one of the most uh, uh, versatile uh, uh, features of the language, the uh, for loops. You'll use a for loop virtually in every program that you write uh, if you continue on doing this. What does a for loop do? Well, a for loop is for uh, doing something uh, repeatedly, I could spell repeatedly, over <laughs> and over again. Uh, a specific number of times. Okay, so let's say we want to do something a hundred times. Well, we could set up a counter in a while loop, uh, but the easier thing to do is use a for loop. What does a for loop look like? Well, a for loop has a for uh, for statement for, and then a left parenthesis, and then you notice it put the right parenthesis. So inside of here go three things. The first thing is the initialization. To initialize it, we need to declare an integer. Let's say a counter. And we'll initialize it to zero to practice. And I'll show you a different way to do this in a little bit. So counter, and we were going to start it at one. Okay. A lot of times we start it at, at uh, zero, but we'll start it at one this time. We can start it at any number we want, uh, positive or negative or zero. Here we're going to say uh, this is the test. So while counter is less than or equal to 100, period, and then say counter plus plus. So here's the three part. This part is the initialization. It is only done once at the beginning of the for loop. When it first hits the for loop, or when it's coming down the program, when it first hits the for loop, it does this first statement once and once only. It does it the first time. Then it does the test. It will do the test every time and it does it at the beginning of the for loop. And then it does the uh, increment. This is what it does after it's finished with the for loop. It will do this after every iteration of the for loop also. So it's three parts you need right here. Alright, now I always put brackets. You don't need them if you're only going to have one statement, but I always put them there. Let's say that we want to print out hello world 100 times. Kind of a trivial thing to do, but there it is. Alright, so what's this going to do? Well, it's going to print it out 100 times. Let's go ahead and build this. Build solution. Succeeded. Dug start without debugging, and what we would hope is is that we'll run it a hundred times. Now, if you were to count these, it would show up 100 times. Okay. Now let's uh, let's prove to ourselves that it did come out 100 times. Let's go ahead and print out the counter right here while we're doing it. So we're going to print out the counter and uh, do that 100 times. Let's build the project. Build solution. It succeeded. Start without debugging and you'll see that the numbers appear over to the left hand side uh, 100 times. Kind of smashed up against it. Alright. Let's go ahead and add our IO manip library and down here we will uh, set width, uh, say 5. We will left justify it in that. And let's say, okay, look good, let's build it. Build solution. It succeeded. Start without debugging. And there we go, 100 times. Now it doesn't uh, uh, doesn't take long to figure out that this is a pretty pretty powerful little tool. Now let me show you something else. Now you noticed up here that I declared 
into the integer counter so I could use it in the for loop. I don't have to do this. The preferred method is to do this, is actually put the declaration inside of the for loop itself. Uh, this you can do in C++. You can't do it in C. The C version is what I just showed you. So you put int in there, counter. Now what's nice about this is counter is only known inside the for loop right here, okay, between these brackets. Outside of here it's not known about it. This is the preferred method of doing it. And that is if you've got a, something else that's defined as counter, uh, the scope of it is such that uh, uh, it's uh, not used inside of this for loop unless you specifically reference it. Alright, so we can, uh, we can build this one. And show you that it works uh, exactly the same way. And boom, there it is, 100. Alright. <laughs> <clears throat> what kind of things can go right here? Well, uh, you notice I put the values in there, 1 and 100, but uh, they can. these numbers can be anything, not just uh, uh, hard-coded values or constants. They can be variables. Just to show you, I'm going to declare some global constants. Int um, counter or uh, equal to um, constant uh, int max count equal 100 and again this is also a very common thing to do is to use you're going to use constants to have them declared as a global max count and again it'll say it'll see the 100 in here and you'll see if I hovered over it see hey, hey it's already declared as 100 project build and then start without debugging works the same way alright again again to review for loop has three parts initialization this is done at the beginning of the loop it's only done done once it, that number right there can be uh, it can be a constant it can be a global constant a local constant it can be a variable so we could actually read this in where do you want to start the count at how far do you want to go this is the test to see if we continue to doing it. as long as this is true the for loop will continue and this is the increment this is the statement is done after uh, every iteration of the for loop again it can be any C++ statement this can be any logical statement this can be any statement alright well I hope this helps it's uh, very powerful the next uh, for loop we're going to do is uh, 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 some nested for loops and uh, a few errors that we're going to uh, look at uh, very common errors that are occur in the uh, uh, for loops